Hey, good morning everyone. Rob here from Southwest Florida Television. Happy Saturday. I'm here in North Naples. At the very north end of Vanderbilt Beach. The very south end of Del Norwegian's Pass State Park. These are some of those beachfront condos along Vanderbilt Beach. Mariah Bay right here. Not many people home now. You can see it's all shuttered up for the summertime. But what a difference as we look to the north. We see Wiggins, Del Norwegian's Pass State Park starts right here. The condos disappear. Boom. Our mile of beach there at Del Norwegian's. This is the very south end of the park. You can see we've got a lot of seaweed on the beach. A lot. Unfortunately, we still have the red tide lingering out here. I'll take red tide over that green toxic algae any day. We've been dealing with, or living with red tide for as long as I can remember living here in Florida. It's nothing new. It's just a major inconvenience, and it's sad to toll that the red tide takes on marine life. There's still quite a few dead fish on the beach. There's some, here's one little dead catfish washing up right now as I'm walking by. Some good news though, look how calm it is out there this morning. We don't have that big onshore breeze that we've had for the past, almost the past week. That's what brought the red tide in. So hopefully with this wind dying down, this red tide algae will start breaking up. This red algae will start breaking up and dissipating. But look at the color in those clouds out there, wow. Gotta take a picture of those real quick. Everybody hang tight while I take a quick photo. I love those colors we get in the morning. Pretty good rainstorm out there. That's all rain out there in the Gulf, down to the south of us. Some pretty big clouds. A couple little flickers of lightning out there earlier. Let's walk up the beach. We'll head up towards Roy, up to the north end of the park. See what we come across this morning. The sun's just starting to rise over here to the east. Maybe we'll get lucky and maybe we have another had another sea turtle crawl or two last night. That'd be awesome. The more nest on this beach, the better. Especially with all this red tide business going on and these high tides that have been covering up the nests and drowning the poor little hatchlings. And here's some, you can see there's a little line of dead fish down here. Victims of the red tide. Let's 
so far this morning it's not too bad I can smell it but it's not overpowering my eyes aren't burning But there are quite a few fish still on the beach here, the dead fish. They'll, the rangers, the volunteers, they'll pick these up at some point. They can always use more help out here. If anybody wants to volunteer to help clean up the beach, they can always use help here. State, our state parks are always understaffed, underfunded. It's a shame one of our most precious resources. And they're at the bottom of the barrel when, when funding, when, when it comes to funding. So if you're into the outdoors, you like nature, you like the beach, consider volunteering here at Del Norwegians. Or if you live somewhere else at any of our state parks, we are always looking for extra help. All you gotta do is call the ranger station. The tide is still going out. So we'll see what happens later today as the tide changes direction. Isn't that beautiful out there? Aren't those clouds spectacular? Look at that. The tops of them now just getting that early morning sunlight coming up from the east. Look at that. Isn't that not beautiful? I have to take a photo, I am so sorry. I love coming out here early in the morning like this. Even though the sun's coming up to my back right now, we still get all these beautiful colors out in the Gulf in the morning. pretty still right now, which is another good thing as far as the red tide goes. What we need now is an offshore breeze. We need the wind to come from the east and blow everything way back out into the Gulf where it came from. That's normally where that red algae is, is way out in the Gulf. I'm gonna come over here and show you something. This is the first, the actual first entrance into Del Norwegens. If you were to walk to the park, this is where you would come in here. And they have the beach warning flags here. They have a set of these flags at the south end and at the north end of the park. But right now, you see we have a purple flag, might be hard to see, and a green flag. We did have a red flag flying because we had a strong surf and a lot of waves and currents. They changed that to a green flag and the purple flag. Now, what do those mean, the green and the purple flag? Well, here's your key down here, the green flag low hazard, calm conditions, exercise caution, okay? The purple, dangerous marine life. That's the red tide. That is, the red tide is an algae. They consider that a form of marine life. So, if you're down at this end of the beach, look for the flags. Learn your colors here. Check every day and every once in a while, we do see these right here. They close the water, 
it gets pretty rough here in the summertime, especially with our tropical storms. Not hurricanes. Obviously, you wouldn't be out in a hurricane, but we get some pretty heavy tropical storms here, and they'll close the beach. There's all those, some of those beautiful sea oats there. Those gorgeous plumes. These are what hold our beach together. They have taken a beating over the years. Over the past year, they have, we have had some pretty strong storms. Last year, we had a hurricane, Hurricane Irma, and she completely buried these sea oats. They were all covered by sand. They've made a fantastic comeback. Hopefully, we won't have a hurricane this hurricane season. This looks to me to be an old, an old sea turtle nest right down here that hatched. They pulled the markings up. I think, I don't know, it looks like raccoons were digging around there. I haven't seen any signs of any new crawls. Oh, here's another. Raccoons were digging over here. Those raccoons are everywhere. They got pretty strong noses. They can smell the, the eggs that didn't hatch in an old nest. How's that sky looking out there now? Oh boy. Check that. Check out those clouds now. Man, you could, that is a big storm out there. That's to the southeast of us, or sorry, southwest, I'm sorry, the southwest. You can see where Vanderbilt Beach starts with all the condos. It's about 80 degrees right now. Today they're expecting a high of 89. Of course, with the heat index, it'll feel a lot hotter than that. That water temperature's oh, right around 86, 87 degrees now. Pretty warm. I've seen it get up into the 90s. That's too warm for me. Here we have a, one of our sea turtle nests. This is where we like seeing the nests. See it way up there in the dunes? That's well protected up there. That is nest number 14. And I can't get up there to see. But um, yeah, that nest is definitely hatched. I can actually see the little turtle tracks all down here on the beach. See all these little, those are the little baby hatchlings tracks when they go down to the water. That's their little footprints. You can see how they drag their little bodies through the sand. These are all little sea turtle tracks down here. can see they come down and you can see you know they've been driven over and whatnot walked over but here's more of them these were where these hundred this you know probably you know 70 80 little hatchlings made their way down to the beach going this way those are the little baby turtle tracks I'll give you here you can see them a little better look at them here, a little closer. Those are the little footprints from the little baby sea turtles. Very cool. So we know nest, we know nest number 14 up there hatched. 
Well, we got a weak connection here. I don't know why that business nonsense is starting up. Let's see if we get a better connection up here. I don't know what's causing that. There we go. Now this nest look like it looks like it unfortunately went underwater here. You can see how high the tide came up. Nest number 44. Ugh. Looks like a ghost crab paid his paying a visit to this nest. Darn it. Gotta watch those ghost crabs and raccoons. These meshes, these little cages can keep pretty much keep the raccoons out, but the ghost crabs can get in between it. That's nest 44. You can see we have, well the other day when I was here, we were up to 56 nests scattered along the beach. There's a set of tracks right here. That's a set of crawl tracks. I don't know where they go. It looks like, I don't know what she did here. But that was a new nest up here. Oh, yeah, nest number 57. Nest number 57 up there. So, we did get another crawl yesterday. Very cool. Let's see if there's any higher than number 57. It's always good news when we see a new nest here on the beach. That's awesome. I'm going to take a quick photo of that. Bear with me. All right, sorry about that. But I can only do video or photos. But I am surprised that the tracks are still here on the beach from yesterday. At least part of the tracks. That's pretty cool. That's the tracks coming out of the water here. You can see how she, her flippers, her hind her flippers, you can see how they kind of dig in and push the sand back as she comes up. And then over here, the return tracks, you can see just the opposite. The sand's pushed to the back here. And on these return tracks, when you see this squiggly line like that, really deep like that, that's a good indication that the female laid, that she did lay eggs. See that squiggly line in between her tracks. Very pronounced here in this one. That's pretty cool. So, 57 nests on the beach. Who knows? Maybe there's more. Maybe there's another crawl. Maybe there was another one last night. That's exciting. Are we going to get over 60 nests on the beach? On this little one-mile stretch of beach, 60 nests? That's pretty impressive. You can see them. See their nests? There's more nests over there. They're just scattered all the way up the beach here. I mean, right here within eyesight, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen nests. Right here, standing here at the beach, 16 nests. That's awesome. The sun's slowly rising there to the to the east. Slowly coming up. Beautiful blue sky this morning. Gonna have some rain this afternoon, it looks like. There's one of our park rangers making his morning rounds, his morning beach patrol. Every morning, 
bright and early, the rangers will ride up and down the beach, sadly, picking up trash, but also checking for new sea turtle nests or anything else that might have happened overnight. You see, we do have a lot of seaweed. There are dead fish on the beach because of the red tide. Unfortunately, we're still under the red tide warning. I'm not having any problems breathing out here this morning. So far, so good. I can smell it. I can smell the red tide, but it's a combination of the red tide and I smell this seaweed more than anything. That's got a real funky smell to it. Beautiful. As we look out into the Gulf, that's a huge thunderstorm out there. Those, look at the size of those clouds. Those are huge. I see some fish jumping out here. That's a good sign. Some little fish jumping out here in the water. Another good sign is how calm this water is. That's what we want to see. I see a bunch of, a whole school of fish right over here. Right out here in the, right over here. See the water turning around there? See them jumping around? Sadly, there's a little dead fish floating out there, too. So there's still fish washing up on the beach. I'm not going to candy coat it and lie to you. But just keep in mind, this is not, this has nothing to do with Lake O, this red tide. Two separate animals, the red tide and that green algae. People are getting the two mixed up and some people are making some really ignorant comments in blogs and things. You've got to learn the facts about the difference between red tide and the green algae. Do some Googling. Both stink, <laughs> literally. But that green algae is that's deadly to, to humans. <laughs> the red tide has been around for eons. But what I was saying about it being so calm out here, that's what we want. That we had that strong onshore breeze for the past five or six days, and that's what brought that red tide in. You know, the red tide's always out there in the Gulf. It's red algae, a red algae balloon. It's not really called, I read somewhere, scientists, <clears throat> biologists, marine biologists, scientists don't like it when you call it red tide because it has nothing to do with the tide, they say. It's just a name, it, a nickname it got. It's a red algae balloon. And when the the wind picks up and comes in off the gulf, that's when it blows that red algae into shore and we get all the problems and the fish kills. But it's always out there somewhere. Now the one thing, the red algae and the green algae are connected somewhat. What happens is if we were to have that green algae out here in our, off our beaches here in Naples, which we do not have. I don't know how many times I have to say that. We do not have that toxic green algae in Naples. But if we did, and we had a red tide, well, the red algae, the, the green algae feeds off the red algae. So that is bad. So that's the only way they're connected. I don't see any new crawls yet, any signs of new sea turtle nests. We 
We're up to 57 so far, as far as I can tell. 57 nests. There's two nests back there. That's nest number 52. <clears throat> I don't know what that other one is. I don't see a number on it. The numbers, I think the number's on the back, but number 52 is on the right. But we saw 57, number 57 down in area one. Oof. There's a big catfish, big dead catfish. And <clears throat> if you can see them, these, these are some dead fish scattered around the beach. They are out here. The rangers can only do so much here. If anybody wants to help volunteer and pick these up, I'm sure they'd welcome the help. Anybody wants to come out and help pick up dead fish on the beach. You're more than welcome to come out here and grab a bag and do your thing. Hmm. What do you got here? This was nest number 32 over here and I see a nest way way back up into the picnic area I don't remember seeing that one boy that girl definitely wanted to play it safe look at that look how far back in that nest is nest number 58 look at that that is up by the picnic table she was not messing around here that is awesome Nest 58. That is really cool. That's where we want to see the nest, up here high and dry. Let me take a picture of that. Bear with me. Well, that is great. So far, all right, we've seen two new nests since my beach walk on Thursday. We saw 57, and that was high up in the dunes. And then we saw 58. And it, she's not in the dunes. She's up up into the picnic area. Look at that. That is incredible. I'm wondering if, you know, they have some kind of instinct that when these tides are high to come up higher, to build their nest higher up on the beach. That's amazing. That is absolutely incredible. Well, 57 and 58, look like they're going to be in really good shape. That is wonderful. All right, let's go see if there's any more new nests. We're getting really close to 60. I don't remember. Since I've been doing my beach walks, I think the most I've seen were 57. So now we're up to 58, and that's pretty cool. Boy, the further north I get, this seaweed gets really, really heavy. Look how thick it is on the beach here. That does stink. That's really what you're smelling when you come out here now. It's not the red tide, it's the seaweed decomposing. It doesn't take too long. It'll go away soon. I can live with the seaweed. Let's get, I just want that red tide to move on. Move out to, move back out into the Gulf where it belongs. Get off our beach. <clears throat> this is area two beach here. I came out yesterday afternoon, did a short little video here. Just up a little ways from here. You notice anything missing on the beach? Come on, gotta be happy about that. That stupid barge is gone. Oh wow, and as I'm saying that, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in. I look to the north, and there is the other end of the dredging operation. 
That's the dredging barge that was pumping the sand to that barge that was down here washed up on the beach. That is leaving. That is heading out of Wiggins Pass and on its way. So I think the dredging is officially over. Wow. That is great news. See all those condos in the background? That's Fort Myers Beach. Way, way off in the distance. But there goes that doggone barge, the dredging barge. See you guys later. Thanks for making Wiggins Pass deeper, but happy to see you leaving. Go check out a couple of these sea turtle nests over here on the beach. See if there was any action. Any hatching action. I don't think so. Unfortunately, these nests look like they got pretty wet. We'll just keep our fingers crossed that those little eggs survived in there. Nest number 37. Nest number 38. Definitely, definitely these nests were underwater. Nest number 17. This nest right here, one of my friends, Deb, one of the park rangers here, Deb, she, this was her first experience with sea turtles. She got to excavate, you know, do a little digging and confirm that there were eggs in there. And she was so excited. She found the eggs here. That was the first time she ever gotten to do that as a park ranger, as a ranger. And it's pretty exciting when you find those eggs. I mean, it's like, is it, is it, was this a successful crawl or not? I mean. Your heart's pumping and then all of a sudden you feel those little eggs in there when you're digging. So she was ecstatic. And then, so they marked that nest, you know, they put the cage on it, they marked it, confirmed it was a successful crawl. They get in their, their little beach buggy and they drove up the beach, well, not too far, right up here. There was another crawl. She's like, oh my gosh. And same thing. Our park manager let her do the probing there and she discovered nest number 18. So she had quite the day, two nests in a row, two confirmed crawls, almost side by side. She was really happy, Ranger Deb. She was talking about that for a long time. The real experience is getting to see these little hatchlings emerge. I would, I would love to see that. You just don't know when it's going to happen. And, it, and it, generally it happens through the middle of the night. Every once in a while there's a hatching in the early, early morning hours or right before sunset or maybe during twilight. And that's what you'll see the videos of. But look at this. Look at how the current has reshaped this beach and look at all the seaweed here. There's a big ridge here in front of me and then there's just a ton of seaweed here, a ton. I mean, that's a foot thick over there along the beach, a foot deep, and then this is all sand is piled up. Now what caused that? I don't know. It's very odd that it's just right here because see where this big pine tree is right here? This is where that barge was tied off ashore during the whole time we were having those big waves coming on shore and the wind blowing on shore. So did that barge kind of affect the current here? I don't know. It just seems odd to me that that's where all the seaweed collected. I mean, it's not the end of the world, it's just seaweed. It is going to decompose and disappear. But while it's doing that, it is going to stink. And it's a shame because it's right by one of the really nice boardwalks here. Where some of our folks that have 
you know, might have walkers or even wheelchairs. They can access the beach here via this nice ramp. We have several of these. They even have beach wheelchairs here. If you just let them know at the ranger station, they will hook you up with a beach wheelchair. And that's pretty cool. That's number 53 over there. Look at all that seaweed. Ugh. This is where I was when I took that video the other day, yesterday. Yesterday afternoon. We've had a, quite a bit of beach erosion too. Nest number 56 up there. We're up to 58 nests. Unless we see some more further north of us. So far, 58 is the highest count, highest number I've seen. But look at this. I'm gonna step off the ledge here. We've had some pretty serious erosion along here. Can you see that there? It's hard to tell in the camera how high that really is, that ridge. That's. Oh, that's probably 18 inches, maybe two feet in some points. But look at the mass of seaweed here. Incredible. It's like walking on a big sponge. And there's a lot more seaweed in the water here too. See it all down here? Not, that's not red tide, that's seaweed. Don't flip out on me. <laughs> Looks like there might be some shells. A lot of times some nice shells get caught up in the seaweed. If you dig through it, I might find something really neat if you take the time to look in in this seaweed. But as we get a little further north, it's just like boom, it stops. We don't see it anymore. But this is right where the barge was, where I'm standing now. right in this area it was tied off to that big tree right there that's where the ropes were tied off and that barge was just right here right out here in this water right here thankfully it's gone one less problem to deal with here yeah there's big clouds out there in the gulf wow for those of you joining just joining yes we still are under red tide warning here but I'm not feeling it at all. Smelling it, feeling it. All I can smell is this seaweed out here on the beach. It's rotting seaweed. And this is up in areas two and three. You probably don't want to park in parking lot two or three. There's a pile of shells up along there.
there are still some dead fish out here on the beach, unfortunately. There's a little dead fish right there. But once I get past all this seaweed, I'm gonna start looking for some shells as we get closer to Roy. Right on the north end of Area 3 Beach right now. And you can see, boom, the seaweed just stops. Very strange. I just came into the areas two and three. I don't think we had any crawls, any sea turtle crawls last night. Over there are 58 nests now. On Thursday, we had seen 56 nests. Now there are 58. Keep in mind, that's just this little stretch of beach of Del Norwegans, this mile long stretch. 58 nests, 58 successful crawls. There you can see three nests right there. One nest, two nests, three nests. Nest 54 over there, nest 30 there, and nest 19 here. And they number them as they come up on the beach, obviously. So this one will be hatching any time now. Then the next one to hatch would be that one there. That would be nest 30, and then that would be the last one, nest 54. It takes, I think, around 50, 55 days for the eggs to incubate. These are loggerhead sea turtles that nest on our beaches here in Naples, in Collier County. Occasionally you get a Kemp's Ridley, which are extremely rare sea turtles, very endangered. Sadly, sadly, last week, we, earlier this week, we discovered a dead Kemp's Ridley on the beach. That was a sad sight to see that poor little dead sea turtle, especially considering how endangered they are. You can see pictures of that. Not the most pleasant thing, but that's the other side of mother nature here. I love the beautiful mornings when we take those beach walks and everything's just picture perfect out here, but it's not always like that. And that's what, you know, I'm not out here to show you. I'm here to show you everything. <laughs> you know, take it or leave it. I'm going to show you the good and the bad. Sometimes Mother Nature can seem pretty harsh. When you see all the dead marine life. All the sea, you know, there's hundreds of sea turtles that have been killed by this red tide. It's horrible to see the pictures of them. I mean, hundreds of them. Well, it's low tide. We're starting to get up into our area where we start to find some interesting shells. Maybe we'll get lucky this morning. Find something neat. Three more nests over here. I just want to make sure I'm not missing a new nest. I can't remember. I don't have a photographic memory. I can't remember where all the nests are on the beach. Nest 36 over there. Oh man, nest 16, nest 34 up there. Dang it, that sucks. Damn raccoon got in here and was digging. Actually dug underneath the wire cage 
God, I hope it didn't get into the eggs. I don't see any broken. Yeah, I do. I see a couple broken eggs. Darn it, those dang raccoons are such pesky little varmints. Man, nest 16. That should be hatching. Give you a look around here. For those of you that are just joining and those of you that have been following, a big difference out here in the water since the past few beach walks that I've done. Very, very calm now out here. The wind has died down. And that's what we want. We don't, we're, what we actually want is we want that wind instead of coming in off the gulf this way, we want to be coming and call it an offshore breeze. We want that wind to blow that way and carry that red tide algae back out into the gulf far away from us where it usually hangs out. But look how calm it is this morning. I'm not having any problems right now breathing. We are still under the red tide warning, but I'm doing fine out here. We're gonna maybe get lucky and find some seashells up the beach. I don't know, unless somebody beats me to them. We have seen some dead fish out here on the beach this morning. They're still out here. If you live in the Naples area and you want to volunteer, help clean up the beach, the rangers could always use a helping hand. They're always understaffed here, underfunded and understaffed. So if you want to join the Friends of Del Norwegian's Pass State Park and make a donation, that is a fantastic thing to do. A great little organization, Friends of Del Norwegian's Pass State Park. Become an active member, volunteer. Becoming a volunteer has some nice little perks, like a free pass to the beach. Pretty hard job, huh, and walking around the beach. <laughs> if you like the outdoors and the beach, consider volunteering. There's a, this is a big drop off here. There's a little island here. Let's see where a good spot to Cut across is a little sandbar. This is a new little sandbar out here. I've never been on this one yet. I don't really see anything too large out here, but I'm going to come out here nonetheless and check it out. Take an up close look at this little sandbar out here and give you a look at our beach from out in the water. A little different perspective. There's, what's that, a piece of an old whelk shell over here. Yep. It's a piece of an old lightning whelk. Piece of a big, light, old, old lightning whelk shell. Wow, that's pretty cool. Anything else out here? Sometimes you find some little fighting conks. Whoa, just heard a big rumble of thunder. Sometimes you'll hear some fighting conks, see some fighting conks crawling around out here. Even starfish, you might find some starfish on these little sandbars. There's a nice little black scallop shell. Nice little black scallop. Got all different color scallop shells there. All different sizes. I don't see Roy's beach chair up there. Well, I don't see anything crawling around out here. We might keep making our way north. Hmm. 
sad. Another victim of the red tide here, unfortunately. So sad. So sad to see all the dead marine life. But remember, this is that fish that was killed by red tide. Everything you're hearing about in the news about Lake Okeechobee and the water releases from Lake Okeechobee and that toxic green algae, that's not what's killed these fish on this beach. It's red tide and it's two totally different things. And you need to read up on the two of them. Big difference. Both are bad, but red tide is a natural occurrence. If you're wondering where I'm at, I'm up in North Naples, Florida, at Del Norwigans Pass State Park. And I'm walking north right now. Now we're in the shade of the trees. The sun hasn't quite made it up. You can see it peeking through the palm trees over there, peeking through the palms. I'm checking the shells out as I come across some little piles here, seeing if there's anything interesting. Just a lot of broken, little broken clam shells. You know, I showed you that black scallop shell earlier. I was on the sandbar. There's another one of our scallops. Look at that. Man, look at the colors on that. Beautiful little shell. Here's one of our little slipper shells. I'll show those several times during our walk just because they're so... They're so common, but yet they're, they're kind of neat. Why is that called a slipper shell, you might be asking? Well, use your imagination. You flip it over, looks kind of looks like a little slipper. A slipper shell. Very common here, and they come in, you can find some pretty big ones, and they got some pretty neat patterns on them, some of them. Just gotta look close. The longer you kneel over and stare at a pile of shells, the more you're gonna find. Look at this. What are the odds of spotting that? Walking along the beach and finding that? You gotta, I was just really lucky. That is a tiny baby apple murex shell. That is an incredibly small. You're not gonna find that if you're just walking along Scan him from left to right. You gotta get down, do the stoop. They call it the Sanibel stoop when you bend over and look through the shells. But there's a little tiny baby murex, apple murex shell. How cool is that? There's a piece of another one, just a piece of another little baby. Apple Murex. That is so cool. And that's the kind of stuff you find when you take the time to look. I could spend the rest of my life out here doing this, but I gotta pay the bills. <laughs> I can't do that. Well, let's move up the beach a little further and see what we find. There's another little sandbar we can walk out on just ahead. There's so many different kinds of shells here at the beach. Del Wiggins isn't known for its shelling per se, although there are lots of beautiful shells there. 
There are some really great shelling beaches here in Southwest Florida. Sanibel's great. Marco Island's really nice. But I just live close by, so I come to Del Nor Wiggins. That's a little olive shell. Missing the top there. To put a string through there and put it on a necklace, a little tiny olive shell. Anything else down here? Well, I'm sure there's plenty down here. Again, it's just a matter of taking the time to look. There's a little kitten's paw. A little kitten's paw shell. Kitten paw, kitten's paw. Pretty obvious why it's got its name, how it got its name. Those are fairly common. You find some of those with some really interesting colors as well. No sign of Roy up there, our friend Roy, quite the character, 93 years old. I don't know where he is. I was looking forward to seeing him this morning. He's always got some something fun to share with us. Little anecdotes or sometimes some a little advice. But I do not see him out there. I'm just picking up a couple more of these little slipper shells. Just to show you the difference in the patterns on them. Flip it over so you can get an idea why they call it the slipper shell. I'm going to give you a look around here. Look at that beautiful blue sky. Is that not gorgeous this morning? Absolutely gorgeous. I'll pan out into the Gulf. Super calm out there this morning. That water is like glass. And as I come around here, out to the south, down to the southwest, that is a huge, huge thunderstorm out there. I actually heard some thunder a little while ago. That is a huge thunderstorm out there in the Gulf. Absolutely beautiful here this morning, despite the red tide warning. Like I said, I am not feeling any of the effects of red tide right now. The only thing that I noticed that was really bad was back behind me in areas, beaches two and three, was all that seaweed. That really stinks. It's trying to decompose. So you might want to avoid those areas if you're coming out here, areas two and three. Look at this, piles of little shells. Can only imagine what might be buried under here. There's a piece of a an old jewel box. It kind of looks like a giant kitten paw, doesn't it? Is that a jewel box or a kitten's paw? Wow. Well, I haven't found any, seen any whelks, any big whelk shells. Found a broken one out on the sandbar. I haven't found any whole little lightning whelks yet, or moon shells. Or... So far, the nicest little find has been that little apple murex, that little baby apple murex that I picked up. That was pretty cool. The odds of seeing spotting that are pff, one in a gazillion, I bet. I just happened to stop and be looking, and there it was. Another 
one of the victims of the red tide. So sad. So, so sad to see the dead fish on the beach. Did you hear that thunder rumbling back there in the that's way out in the Gulf. I don't know if you could hear that thunder or not. Some really, really cool rocks here. Fossils, actually. Pick them up and pick a couple up. See, you never know what you're gonna find fossilized inside these, these old stones along the beach. Fish skeletons, really old shells. There's a lot of folks come out here fossil hunting. They don't go shelling, they go fossil hunting. There's some really nice, nice stuff here. People find old arrowheads out here. Boy, that thunder is really rumbling. That is a huge, huge storm out there in the Gulf. Huge. We all know who says huge, don't we? <laughs> Whenever I hear that word, there's only one person comes to mind. Can you hear the birds chirping out in that little sandbar out there? What do we have out there? It looks like we have some seagulls, seagulls and terns sitting out there. Gulls and terns. I don't see any pelicans. Not a lot of shells here. The other day when I was out here, there was a pile of shells right out in this area. We found some pretty neat stuff. But again, we're at low tide now too. We were finding some neat stuff up in here the other day. Looks like it's been pretty well picked through. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see, where's a piece of worm rock? Any worm rock around here? Show everybody a little piece of worm rock. I'll come across some, I'm sure, here. There's a big pile of shells here. It's so hard. Looking through these. There's definitely some great piles out here to come out and dig through. If you want to spend some time sifting. Looks like all the dredging barges are packing up and heading out of town. Offshore out there. Moving away, finally. Look at all these seashells. 
It's actually hard to walk on them to, in bare feet here. Wow. Holy cow. There's a bunch of them down here. We saw a lot of worm shells up here the other day. Found a couple nice worm shells. There's a the tip. There's a worm, a wormy tip right there, worm shell. another worm shell. They're, they're usually pretty common, these worm shells. At one time I had like a big pickle jar full of them. Yeah, now there's a, darn it, a dead horseshoe crab on the beach. Another victim of the red tide. So sad. So, so sad. The horseshoe crab. Those are Google horseshoe crabs. Pretty interesting creatures. Really interesting how they shed their shell. Just amazing how they shed. Sadly, that's a dead one. It was killed by the red tide. I'm not going to go too far out on this sandbar. I don't want to spook the birds there. You want to respect all the birds here when you come to the beach. You come to our beaches in Florida. Give all the birds their space. Don't let your kids chase them up and down the beach. I watch parents letting their kids do that. It's just horrible. Oh, hey, I'm glad I walked out here. How cool. Looky here. A little moon shell, a little shark eye shell, just sitting out here on the beach. I love these things, a little shark eye. Just laying up here on the sandbar. I was gonna pick up a piece of worm rock and I spotted this sitting next to it. How cool is that? And here's the worm rock I was gonna pick up. piece of the worm rock. You find these big chunks of worm rock all over. It is a nice piece right here. You can see all the worm tubes in there. Worm rock. Moon rock. <laughs> Looks like something from another planet, doesn't it? Very, very cool. What do we have over here? A little a little tiny cockle shell sitting up here. It's a nice cockle shell. It's got some great color. A little cockle. A cockle shell. These are pretty common here as well. Beautiful here. Still got that big thunderstorm out there starting to break up a little bit. You can see those condos down there? That's the end of Del Norwegian's Pass State Park. It starts where those condos end. Comes along here to the north. See how beautiful it is? No homes or condos along the beach here at the park. There's a mile of beach. I'm up in area four now. There's five parking lots. We're up by number four. This is where we normally chat with our friend Roy, right over here by these pine trees. That's where Roy sets up, but he's not out here this morning. I don't know why. I don't know where he's at. He's usually here just about every day. Anybody just tuning in and wondering, yes, we still have the red tide out here. Still dealing with the red tide, but it is not bad at all today. I think it's 
on its way out of here finally. You can see it's very calm out here. Very, very calm. I miss seeing our sea stars. Or usually we find some sea stars out here. I don't know where they're at. There's another little cockle shell down in the water down here. That's a nice little cockle right there. Look at the little points on it there, the little spines. That's a nice cockle. That's a nice color inside it. Great little cockle shell. And these, again, I have no idea what the names of these shells are, but you find them all over, these little shells here. Beautiful little shells. No idea what the name of them are. Scallops are fairly common here, scallop shells. There's a piece of one, darn it. Wish I could find a nice big one to show you, a nice big whole one, but that gives you an idea of the colors of the scallops. They go from black to white and everything in between here. Beautiful. Well, this is a really good sign. These are the, the two barges from the dredging operation. These are what were in Wiggins Pass, but they're out just picking up that pipe, it looks like, that ran from Wiggins Pass. They're picking up all of their equipment, getting it out of the water, and they're gonna be heading out of here. So it looks like the dredging is finally over. And they did get that barge off the beach, the barge that was washed up on the beach. They got that out of here, so hallelujah. One less problem to deal with. Quiet, peaceful, calm Saturday morning out here. It's so quiet. I've only seen two people out here on the beach. Now the park officially doesn't open until 8 a.m. So if you have an after hours pass, like I do, you can come in 24 seven. So after eight, it does start to pick up a little bit. There's a lot of little shells. This is area four again. There's tons of little shells up here. I'm sure if you spend some time digging around, you're gonna find some neat little things here. I just wanna go a little further up the beach. See what it looks like. Still seeing signs of dead fish, sadly. What all's down here? out here anything out here that looks like a big slipper shell over there on the beach a big slipper shell it's a pretty good size slipper shell there look at that one that's a good size slipper shell Flip it over, use your imagination. It kind of looks like a little slipper. 
you'll find these all over the place. But I always like picking them up several times and showing people just, they're so neat. The little slipper shells. I'm gonna keep walking north here. This is North Naples, Florida, Del Norwegian's Pass State Park in North Naples, Florida. Let me take a little stroll out here. See if there's anything crawling around in the water here on the bottom. I found some pretty neat shells out here, live shells. Big horse conks, big lightning whelks crawling around. I'm not seeing much of anything out here this morning. Beautiful out here though, absolutely gorgeous. This is one of my favorite spots at the beach here, this little sandbar. There's an old, old Florida fighting conch. Pretty worn out down here, not much left to it. Find lots of oyster shells out here. There's a little oyster shell right there. Find some pretty big ones out here too. That's looking south down towards the city of Naples. Beautiful out there in the Gulf though this morning, absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Nice and calm. And I do think the wind is blowing, coming from, blowing offshore, which is perfect, which is what we want. We wanted to blow that red tide away from us, back out into the gulf where it came from. I want to take a quick picture. This is one of my favorite views here with that beautiful blue sky and the green pine trees. Hang on a sec. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Sorry about that, but that's the way it goes. When I take a picture, the signal gets interrupted for a minute there. Isn't that beautiful, the little waves rippling over the shallow water there? It's looking north up towards Bonita Springs. And I see a lone beach walker headed down this way. Another old Florida fighting conch shell. Lost all its color. Oh, wow, look at that. It's like a slice of a fighting conch. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I never quite saw one like that before. That's pretty neat. Almost like somebody sawed it in half. <laughs> wow.
Any interesting seashells down here? Hmm. Nothing's jumping out at me here. I think this might be one of our friends walking down the beach here who I haven't seen in a million years. Wait till you see who's walking the beach. It's a complete stranger. I haven't seen you in ages. <laughs> Astrid, how are how you are doing, you? honey? Doing good. <laughs> so how good to see you. Oh, our friend's not here this morning. Hi, no, I saw him. He left already. Oh, did he? Yeah, he's heading to a swim party with Jenny. Jenny's having a swim competition. It's all about Jenny. <laughs> downtown, which is River Park. So if you have time, yeah. just go there. Yep, today's our big swim meet. Yeah. Boy, he didn't waste any time getting down there. Yeah, he was really <laughs> rushing out. <laughs> It doesn't start till like 11 or something, I yeah. thought. Oh, well. It so, starts at 9 and oh, goes to 12. Well, oh, it's earlier this year. We went last year. It was a little later. Yeah. Well, good for him. So I'm here to check out the the red type situation. It's not so bad <laughs> this, yeah. today. I, mean, I really don't smell anything. I think it's pretty good. It's that seaweed. Did you see all that the seaweed on the beach down yes. in 2 and 3? Yes, that was, there's a lot of seaweed. It was there. terrible down there. I walked up to the north end and there's not a lot of fish, the small tiny ones. Uh -huh. The water isn't that nice. We used to have this clear blue water, but... Well, it's the tide think, going out yeah. and... But no, it's, yeah. it's coming and going. It yeah. depends on the wind, so we exactly. may, might be lucky. I think it's going to be getting better now. Yeah. I think we're... Now that it's not those big waves and everything. Right. So how's the real estate business? It's really busy. We have a lot of Europeans in town. Yeah. Yeah, and they love to buy homes here. Absolutely. So that's why I have to go back to work today at 1. Oh, boy. So if you see me or meet me, find me at the 5th Avenue. There you go. What's the... What office? It's the John R. Wood Properties. John R. Wood. It's there you the go. Naples, old Naples office, 787 5th oh, Avenue. You if, yeah. you, if you want to come down here and join us in paradise, right. Astrid can hook you up. Yes. If you have a <laughs> question about real estate, let yeah. me know. And she gives you a, a beach tour when you come down. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We're going to set up a meeting with with Roy. Oh, there you go. You get Actually, to meet Actually, do Roy. you guys know it's his birthday tomorrow? Jennifer's birthday. Oh, it's Jennifer's, Jennifer's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jennifer's birthday. Right. Oh, yeah. We all know about that. He hasn't stopped talking about that. <laughs> He's let us know about that. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. So there's going to be a big party for her tomorrow here at the beach. Yeah. Yeah. It's the Jennifer show tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Astrid, it's so good seeing you. See you. Enjoy yep. your walk. Yep. You too. And see you next time. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Our good friend Astrid. I've not seen Astrid in ages. So if you think about moving down here, give Astrid a call. She's at John R. Wood. John R. Wood Real Estate. She'll take care of you. Look at that. Look at that big storm out there. Wow. Well, I don't know how much further north I'm going to go here. You can see our beach kind of gets really, really narrow just ahead of me. That's because of some pretty good storms we've had. It washed the beach away. That only happened over the past few months. This beach used to continue all the way up to that pine tree up there. 
Now there's just a little sliver of beach left up there. That's area five, the north end of the park. It's just a tiny little sliver of beach. And we have a really high tide. You just, you have to go up and walk the pathway in, in the woods there to get to Wiggins Pass, which is just up past those trees there. And that's where everybody goes fishing, Wiggins Pass. You can see we've lost a lot of beach up here. Just imagine this beach used to continue up, just right on up the coast there. Now look at it. It's all gone. Still dealing with the effects of the red tide. Still got some dead fish laying around on the beach. The water looks pretty darn nice up here. It's a little cloudy, but it's getting better and better now. It was horrible earlier this week. Beautiful weather though. What a beautiful blue sky. Is that just not incredible? Now here you can see the water getting brown. This is actually the tide going out of Wiggins Pass. Is the color of that water has nothing to do with Lake Okeechobee, believe me. But since we're at low tide now, there is a little beach left that you can walk on to get up to Wiggins Pass. Maybe we'll walk a little further north up here. pretty much walked the entire length of this beach today. We started all the way down at the south end this morning. We're up to 58 sea turtle nests on the beach here. 58 loggerhead sea turtle nests or 58 successful crawls. Sadly, we've lost a few of the nests to, to weather. To high tides, high tides and rough surf. That's always sad. We've had quite a few nests hatch already. Nesting season, I believe, runs through the month of August. And then the hatchlings, the hatchings occur all the way through the month of October. If I got my date straight. So we're past the peak of nesting season, but we still, we'll still have some sea turtles coming ashore nesting. It's pretty crazy. Sometimes they <laughs> come way up on the beach. Our last two nests were pretty far up on the beach. Now here's an example of one. I wanna show you this, look at this, way up in here. I wanna show you something here. Look at, look at this little step here. And there's the water out there. We had a sea turtle. She crawled up from the water out there, came up this ledge up here up past this bench and over here up into the picnic area look at that that was nest number 48 and that's something that was a pretty impressive crawl for a sea turtle but that nest is high and dry and what's really amazing is how those little hatchlings are going to find their way back down there to the water that's just incredible but look how far away that nest is from the water. 
That's nest number 48. Just absolutely amazing there. We're up to 58 nests now. That was an impressive crawl for a loggerhead sea turtle. Go back down to the water here. I see some folks heading out to the beach up ahead of me. So we're not the only ones. There's a little piece of a broken moon shell, it looks like down here. The shark eye. Yep, just the top half of a shark eye shell. Such cool shells. Not a whole lot of shells here this morning. I did find a little moon shell earlier. Just up on the sandbar, not a very big one. Kind of faded out. Pretty old. That's a little moon shell right there, a little shark eye that I picked up earlier. Another neat little shell that I picked up. It was just pure luck that I happened to see it. Was this? I found this little tiny baby apple murex shell. Look at the size of that. Look how small that is. A little baby apple murex. That is really cool. I just happened to stop and was looking down, and boom bent over and there it was. Very cool. Lots of little fish, dead fish here on the beach. I don't know if you can see them. These are more like the little bait fish that swim along the shore here. Little baby catfish over there. This is the north end of the park here. What's left of the north end of the beach. Our beach used to go out to there, way out there. And this is low tide. So you can imagine when it's high tide, you know, the water is up to here. But the beach at Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park actually ends at Wiggins Pass, which is just up around the corner from these fallen trees up here. All this stuff got knocked over by Hurricane Irma last September. Well, there's a dead horseshoe crab. We've seen quite a few dead horseshoe crabs during this bout of red tide. There's another one. So, so sad. I didn't think anything could kill a horseshoe crab. I thought they were indestructible. There's a little fighting conch, a Florida fighting conch shell. Fairly common shells here. Got a lot of fighting conchs offshore. Always remember when you pick up a shell, especially when it's in the water, check to make sure there's nothing alive inside of it. You don't want to take anything living, even alive, home from the beach. Same goes for sand dollars. Sand dollars and sea stars. There's a big olive shell down here. There's an 
olive shell. It's a nice olive. Missing the tip. Usually it comes to a nice little point. It's an olive shell. Every time I find an olive shell, it always has other shells wedged up inside it. Pretty funny. That's an olive shell. Anything else down here besides little dead fish? A piece of a worm shell. Just a little curly cue from a worm shell of a worm shell. Getting a whiff of the red tide here for sure. Definitely just blew by me. Overall though, a huge improvement. Huge improvement in the red tide situation here at Del Norwegans. Still got the warning signs up and the warning flags. Yep, you can definitely smell it up here by Wiggins Pass. Oh, darn it. Ooh, here's a nice little shell. Looky there, nice little lightning whelk. That's got some nice color to it. A little lightning whelk. Beautiful shell. That's a beauty right there, a lightning whelk. That's a keeper, for sure. Wow. I'm glad I came up here. I wasn't going to come up this far this morning. What else might be down here? Maybe I'll walk around this tree up here, give you a look at Wiggins Pass. So you can imagine this is low tide, high tide, we'd have to take the beach, the high road and go around this tree. Yeah, people have started hanging shells on the roots of this toppled over sea grape. Again, this tree, these trees got knocked over during Hurricane Irma last September. This is a sea grape tree that got toppled over. Well, there's Wiggins Pass. This is the north end of the park. The very north end of Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park. And on the other side of the pass there, that's Barefoot Beach Preserve. That's a county beach. Collier County Parks and Rec manages and maintains Barefoot Beach Preserve just on the other side of Wiggins Pass over there. Yeah, more dead fish up here. That's a dead mullet down there. A mullet. seeing many shells here on the beach up at the pass here but I just wanted to give you a look at the end of the park this is however you want to look at the beginning or the end <laughs> this is the north end of Del Norwegans Pass State Park
take a quick photo. Bear with me. All right, so I am back. Let's walk a little further north here, and then we'll turn around and start heading back. Definitely hear thunder out there in the Gulf. We're supposed to have some rainstorms this afternoon. Afternoon thunderstorms. If we look out to the southwest, look at all those, that's rain out there. All rain. We missed our friend Roy this morning. I guess he's down at Jennifer Ann's swim meet down in Naples there. I forget what they call River Park or whatever. It's part of the Special Olympics. Jennifer Ann takes part in that every year. She usually does pretty well in her class. They want to wish her good luck. Good luck in your swim meet today, Jennifer. And then tomorrow is Jennifer's birthday. So Roy's throwing a party for her here at the beach up in Area 4, and he's invited everybody on Facebook to come to the party. Starts about noon. Up at the north end of Area 4. Come celebrate Jennifer's birthday with Roy and some of our Facebook friends. Good morning. morning. See, the water doesn't look too bad here. I think it's definitely improving. I only got one little whiff of that red tide this morning. Or still cloudy. That's because it's been so rough. But I bet in another couple days it's going to be back to its old beautiful self again here. You look around here. Gorgeous. A gorgeous Saturday morning from North Naples, that's for darn sure. An old fighting conch shell. It was half buried in the sand.
very, very, very peaceful Saturday morning. It was, I mean, I've just seen maybe a handful of people on the beach. Awesome. A lot of people are staying away because of the red tide, obviously, but like I said earlier, it is not bad out here at all, at least this morning. We started this week. How are you doing today? Good. And you? Good. Oh, and ask me a question if you have a minute. Yeah, what's that? Are you filming still? Yeah. I just it's live. Here. I just want to you here every single Saturday. Oh, more, almost, almost three times day. a day. Three times. Three times a week. Not three times a week, at least. Okay. Are you be here because of the dredging? Or no, no. Because you like just it. Because I like it. <laughs> and I, I, I just share what I find on the beach with people live on Facebook here. There you and. Go. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes but it's I tell fishy. it like sometimes I, I tell it like it is, you know. It's Have not all day. sugar coated. No, it's not. <laughs> Thank you. Your, your yep. Facebook page is Southwest Florida TV. Yep, yep, okay. yep. Just go in there. Yep, you'll see it. Right. Have a great day, guys. Right. Well, might have picked up some new followers. That's always fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right around this area is where I got a little whiff of the red tide. Just keeping our fingers crossed. It's not windy. If you remember earlier in the week when we were having the really bad, you know, feeling the symptoms of the red tide, the coughing, the burning eyes. Those, we had big waves and the wind blowing on shore. Well, that's what was bringing, that's what was causing that, that onshore wind. It blows that red algae. It's normally sitting off the coast, way out in the Gulf. It brings it in closer to shore and picks it up in the, in the wind and the waves. And that's what makes our beaches so bad. <laughs> I can smell it here. Definitely smell it here. It's still lurking around here. This is the south end of Area 5, the north end of Area 4. Definitely I can smell it here. You can actually see the water has kind of a reddish tint. That very well could be the red, the red algae right in this area here. But it's definitely, definitely improving on the rest of the beach. Thank goodness. Earlier this week, people were gagging. I mean, it was so bad. But hopefully the breeze, the wind's gonna turn around and come from the east and blow offshore, and blow all this red algae back out into the Gulf. Keeping our fingers crossed. Back where it came from. Whoa, just stepped on a big rock. Right where I was walking, I'll turn around and show you behind me. We didn't have much beach to walk on there. Hurricane Irma last September. Took out a big chunk of our beach and then not too long ago, we had another big uh, tropical depression offshore and it washed the entire beach the way here. Remember, it's low tide now. High tide, there's nothing to walk on here. That happened just a few months ago. We're coming into area four beach as we make our way south. That's 
where we normally catch up with our friend Roy, but as you heard, he's not here this morning. This is up in North Naples, Florida, Del Nor Wiggins Pass State Park. Beautiful Florida State Park. Now you go down to the south of Del Nor Wiggins onto Vanderbilt Beach. That's that beach is maintained by the county, Vanderbilt Beach, and they kind of they treat their beaches differently here. The state just kind of lets Mother Nature run her course, take her toll. I mean, it's always changing shape here. This is all new. All this, the shape of this beach is all new. It used to be straight. Look at it now. It all curves in and out. This has all happened in the past six months. Amazing. This beach used to just go straight down here. But look at how it's grown over here. Amazing. I'm going to sign off here. I appreciate everybody watching and tuning in. Be sure to tell your friends about Southwest Florida Television. Please take the time to check out all of my photos and videos. And if you hear me talking about something and you don't know what it is, Google it. Google it. That's what it's all about. Be sure to let everybody know where you're watching from. This is our little beach family here, our little beach community right here on Facebook. We usually get some interesting little conversations going with our followers here in the comments. That's what this is all about. I'm just here to provide a platform to bring everybody together. Make sure you hit that like button and the follow button and the share share Southwest Florida television with your friends. Our little communities growing every day. We'll have a fantastic weekend, have a fantastic Saturday. Not exactly sure when I'll be back out for another broadcast. I try to come out at least three times a week. I hope you enjoyed this morning's walk. It was a pretty good one. Just so you know, we do have 58 sea turtle nests now, 58 as of this morning. So that's wonderful. So I'll post a couple pictures later. I'll upload this video to YouTube. You can watch it in a little better quality on YouTube later today. I'll share the link to the YouTube post on oh, with, within some of the pictures, in the descriptions of some of the pictures that I post later. Look for that YouTube link. You can watch this whole entire video, see pieces you missed. Again, have a wonderful Saturday. For Southwest Florida Television, I'm Rob Stan. God bless.